So today I'm gonna to go through my computer science degree. If you guys don't know, I graduated from Georgia Tech with my bachelor's in computer science last May in 2020, not 2021. So I've been out of school for over a year now. I'm on DegreeWorks, which is basically just like Georgia Tech's degree website. Not gonna lie, it's a little triggering looking at this thing. My first semester freshman year, I had to take English, which I'm not gonna talk about that because this is like computer science degree. So, and then I had to take Calc 2 because I had only taken the one where you only get credit for Calc 1. So I took Calc 2 and I remember the class honestly wasn't that difficult like it was very doable if that makes sense in comparison to other math classes but I still remember taking it being like oh Georgia Tech is not an easy school but yeah so it wasn't really too bad I think I took oh I took CS 1331 no, I took CS 1301, my bad. So this was, or still is, the intro course for computer science majors at Georgia Tech. I actually really liked it. I wasn't crazy about my professor, but I, you know, if you have a bad professor, but you still like the class, that's when you know you really like the class. So I really liked what I was learning. It was my first time learning Python. Still love Python to this day. If you want more tips on what your freshman class uh, may be like, I actually my last computer science video was called like freshman CS guy or something like that. So you can check that out by clicking the eye on the screen. And then I took psychology. So I took psych 1101, not much else to it. It's literally like psych 101. You learn about like social psych, you learn about like drugs and addiction and literally everything across the board about psychology. So if you ever have the chance to take a psych course for an elective, definitely recommend. At Georgia Tech, we have to take a class called i think it's like cs 1100 which is basically like the intro to being like a cs student it was honestly like really helpful it was like a one credit hour class and it was just a participation grade so i think it was pass fail but basically like you set up like your linkedin you write your first resume you build your course schedule like you do all of these things that are so helpful and honestly really helped me in my future as a Georgia Tech student. So I think that was all for my first semester. But my second semester, what did I take? I remember I took CS 1331, which is what I said in the beginning as a mistake, but it's basically intro to object-oriented programming. So this class I also liked too. It was pretty similar format to CS 1301, except I think our homework was due like every two weeks, learned Java, learned object-oriented programming. Um, not much else to it. I liked the professor. The tests were, you know, pretty standard. Okay, so I took EAS yeah, yeah, 1600, which is basically the earth science class. And as a computer science major at Georgia Tech, you have to take two science courses in a sequence plus physics. So I decided to take EAS because that's literally the easiest science out of, you know, physics, chemistry, oh, biology. I, I knew I wasn't going to do any of those other three. So I was like, and I had to take physics one. So I was like, I'm gonna do AAS. This class, not really much to it. It had labs. It was super like mind numbingly easy. Yeah, it was a good time. <laughs> and then the next class I wanna talk about is linear algebra. So this was when like my first semester at Georgia Tech was honestly fine. Like I remember, I think I got like one B and then the rest of my classes were A's. And I remember I was like pretty okay with that. But then my second semester, linear algebra kicked my ass and I was like, Georgia Tech is hard hard. I remember the first test I think I literally got like a 60 or something that was just really like that like shook me to the core that I had never like a grade I hadn't seen before and I was like oh my god so then I remember I had to put in like all the work I went to like all the professors office hours I would like do my homework super diligently I'd really study and prep for the test and I came out with a B also by the way Georgia Tech doesn't do A plus B plus C plus or A minus and all this stuff we just get A B C D or fail but yeah so I remember that class like really like almost it almost ruined me, <laughs> but then I would have other classes that would almost ruin me even more. Do I have any tips for that class? Honestly, no, because I think what made it so hard is because like calculus, you already know, you've already most likely, like you've taken calculus in high school, but like linear algebra was so new to me that I was like, what the hell is this? And then the last class I took was English. So I think those were all the classes I took my freshman year, I'm so sophomore year. Oh wait, that's a lie, sorry. I took one more class. I took health too, which is like a required course. No one cares about that. But yeah, I took all those classes my freshman year and then we made it to sophomore year, which absolutely wrecked me. So let's get into it. Okay, so sophomore year was definitely the year that Georgia Tech was like, <laughs> I'm gonna mess you up. I took intro to discrete math, data structures and algorithms, multivariable calculus. And then I also took uh, the second part of earth science. First, let's start with discrete math. So I actually really like discrete math. I don't know why it like, 
It's one of those things that just like kind of clicks for me. Class itself was actually, it was challenging, but I liked what I was learning. I think we had like three tests. We had like homework every week or something like that. Um, you had to do like, it's basically just like doing proofs and I don't know, true, false stuff. <laughs> this is so embarrassing. How did I graduate with this degree? But I remember I really liked the class and I liked the professor. Um, I don't think I got an A in the class. I remember I got like really close to an A and I was like a little bummed out about that. But with the way that the tests were, I mean, maybe I was just dumb. I think the tests were weighted like, maybe like 50%. I remember the homework was like 10%. Tests were like something, some really ridiculous percent of your course grade. And then of course the final exam too was a really ridiculous um, percentage of your grade, but I like the class. The next one I wanna talk about is another math class. It's multivariable calculus. So this is Calc 3 pretty much. And I remember I was like low key killing it. Like I was shocked. I remember I took like the first test. I got like an A, I took the second test got an A and then I took the last test and I got like a C and I was like, oh my God. But I remember being like really good at the class, which was random because it's a hard class, but I also, I really can't tell you what I learned in that class either. I remember I, I used some of the stuff in machine learning. That's all I remember too. <laughs> but I remember someone talking about the final exam being like ridiculously hard. And I was like, <laughs> you know, whatever. Like I, I did so well in this class. Like, I made like, I made A's on the first two tests. I got a C on the last one. That's fine. Like I'm gonna get an A in this class. Come for the final exam. I remember looking at the first page and I was like, I have absolutely no, like I have never in my entire life, let me think. Yeah, I think I have never in my entire life like given up on an exam before and that exam, I literally gave up because I didn't even know, where, like I did not know what to do. I remember thinking like, you know, like I probably, you know, like, I don't think I did well. I'm like, maybe I don't think I, like I was like, maybe I got like a C, you know, like maybe I could have like made it by the skin of my teeth and maybe gotten a C on the exam, y'all. I got a 49. I think that's literally the lowest grade I've ever gotten. Maybe, potentially, maybe that's not true. That was like the lowest grade I'd ever gotten up to that point in my life. And I think it dropped my grade to like a C or something. And then the professor, since everyone did like absolute trash on that exam, the professor ended up curving the class. So I ended up getting a B in the class. If you ever fail a final exam, chances are they might curve the class, but don't take my word for it. Okay, and then the last class I wanna talk about is data structures and algorithms. So I struggled in this class. If you're a computer science major, you need to pay attention to this class. You need to learn this class. You need to know this class at the back of your hand to do well in coding interviews. Basically, the, what the homework was, was like you would just have to code all of the data structures so you could like learn about them and then you could yeah, the code all the algorithms. And like for some strange reason, I just, I would like do the homework, but like coding data structures would just like piss me the hell off. Cause I was like, I know I'm never gonna need to code like a, a hash table, you know what I mean? Like, cause you can use, like you can use the, the method or the function or the library, whatever. And I was just like, I'm never gonna need to code this. So why am I coding this right now? So I just like really had this like mental blocker of like, I really don't need to know this. Long story short, <laughs> didn't do too well in the class. Um, I love the algorithms part of the class. I've always loved algorithms. You'll hear me talk about it a little bit later. So yeah, that class wasn't great for me, but my one advice is really just to pay attention to that class and not have a like, I guess like a complex, complex of sorts that you're never gonna need to code this because in your coding interviews, you may actually have to build a data structure based off one of these things. And you know, if you're smart, then you'll just learn all then instead of trying to cram it all later when you're interviewing. <laughs> Spring semester, I was like determined to have my comeback moment and then life simply said no. Let's start off with something fun and happy. User interface design, which is CS3750, is not my favorite class ever, but it was like one of my more enjoyable classes because it was the first class I had to take for my people thread, HDI um, concentration. And basically in that class, you have, we had like a theme and then we ended up just building an app but just the UI of the app. <laughs> I was like in this like random ass group because I once again had no friends in my class. We built an app for like exchanging Georgia Tech meal swipes, which honestly was like a pretty good idea. It was a really cool class to just learn about all the design heuristics and whatnot and just learn like how much design is actually something that is taught and not just something that like I do think it is something that you're born with, like having an eye for design, but I also think that there are like actual techniques and foundational concepts to design. The next one I can talk about is physics. My friends who took physics before me um, were all like, you know, it's like a pretty manageable class and they were right. It was actually a very manageable class and I took physics in high school. I took literally AP physics, got like a, I don't even know, I, I, I didn't get credit for it basically. And I was like, I'm so bad at physics. Like physics in high school literally stressed me the hell out and I, I would like cry over it, like embarrassing. But physics at Georgia Tech was actually really not difficult. They made it 
in such a way where like it was almost i don't want to say impossible to fail but even with like the way that the tests were weighted the exam was weighted everything like that like it was just a very well designed course and i actually felt like i learned a lot and i didn't really struggle in it so shout out to georgia tech physics one because that was actually a fun time for me I don't know, fun isn't really the right word, but it, I wasn't suffering. And then the next CS course I took was CS2340, which is basically like the intro class to junior design. But this was like my beginnings of working on like a software development project with the group. If you're a computer science major, be prepared to have a lot of project-based classes, especially where you're working in groups. So you have to learn how to work well with people because honestly, that's where your job's gonna be most likely in the future. So. That's all I have to say on that. And for my final class, I took my sophomore year. It is CS2110. So this class, this class, this class nearly set me over the edge. So basically what the class is, just like the foundation, like the foundations of computers. So you start off learning things in bits, so like ones and zeros. And then from there you learn about assembly, you learn assembly and I, this is just like my, well, I have a lot of flaws, but this is one of my fatal flaws in terms of learning where like, if I don't think I'm gonna use something after I graduate or even like tomorrow, like, or not tomorrow, but like, you know, the next year or something like, like if I don't feel the need to like retain this information, I simply will not learn it. So we learned this kind of assembly, which I forgot which one it was, but there was this path you had to learn called the, I think it was like the LC3 path. And like, you actually had to memorize it to be able to do well in the class and I simply chose not to memorize it. I literally, I was like, there's no way in hell I'm gonna memorize this. And I'm not gonna lie, I have a pretty good memory wherein that like I can, I don't think it's like photographic, like I don't, I'm not that smart. If I take the time to memorize something, I can memorize it. I simply chose not to. So I was struggling in that class on all the quizzes and tests because I didn't memorize the damn path. And like to do well in the class, you had to memorize that path. Anyways, I still don't really feel like I ever understood assembly, like the registers, states, whatever. I don't know, I really don't care. If someone watches this and they're like, you know, trying to hire me, they're like, this girl doesn't want to learn anything. I just didn't want to learn this, is what I'm trying to say. Anyways, and then after that, you go into C. C, honestly, coming from assembly to C, C did not seem so bad, but the words, Malik, Realic, and whatever that last one still triggered me to this day. As you can tell, I did horrendous in this class. I was failing this class up until the final exam because guess what I did? I learned the LC3. I literally learned the entire path for the final exam because I was like, this is do or die. Either I'm gonna have to retake this course or I'm gonna like freaking pass this thing. So learn the entire path. And on all the other previous exams, like I probably got like 40s and 50s, maybe 60s, I have no idea. On the final exam, I literally got like, I think I got like an 84 or like an 88, some sort of like high to mid or mid to high B because I actually took the time to learn it. What I can say about this class is that if you have to take this course and you are like me and you're like, I will literally never go into the lower levels of computer programming. If you wanna make your life just a little bit easier, just like learn what you need to learn and get through it. Yeah, it was just something that I was just so deeply uninterested in and it was so, it was also like difficult for me to learn. I just like couldn't really wrap my head around it. I think on top of that, we had to learn from a textbook because the specific kind of assembly we were learning was like so rare. Like no one, I think like x86 assembly is like pretty common. We weren't learning that, we we're learning some other assembly. And like, I couldn't learn from watching YouTube videos because no one was teaching on this topic. I'm like still triggered just even thinking about that class. Anyways, I'm going way too slow. We're only halfway through the, my college experience. So tell me who's gonna love you, love you like I do. Who's gonna touch you, touch you like I do.